We're going to take a look at solving an inequality using a table. In this particular case, we're going to be looking for when y1 is less than y2. Since we have this table over here, we don't need to worry about what the equations are for y1 and y2. All we need to do is take a look at the values in this table. In order to find out when y1 is less than y2, you want to glance through this table and first find out where they're the same. And notice right here, when x is 3, y1 and y2 are both negative 1. This particular spot right here, that's our turning point, where they're equal. And we need to figure out what happens before that point and what happens after that point. So what you want to do is take a look at your table and glance at the values right before this spot where they're exactly the same. And notice that right here, y1 is negative 1.33, and right here it's negative 4. In this case, y1 is greater than y2 right here. If you look at the next spot right here, notice that this is still greater than that point right there. So that means that in the, with these values up here in the table, the y1 is greater than the y2. Let's take a look at the other side. Over here, if you look at this spot right here, we have negative um, 0.833, and we have a positive 0.5 there. Notice that as we continue on, even right here at 4.5 for an x, we have a negative 0.5 with a positive 3.5. These values right here for y1 are smaller than these values over here for y2. So it looks like in the table, from this point right here down this direction in the table, the values for y1 are smaller than the values for y2. Now, if you take a look at the table, when we're solving this, what we really want are the x values. And we have a 3 here. What happens is everything in the table down here, um, which are the values that end up being greater than 3 in the x column here, that's where your y1 is larger or smaller than your y2. So it looks like everything from when your x is 3 forward, you end up having what you want. Now, since our inequality is a less than and it doesn't have an equals underneath it, we actually don't want to include this 3 value here. We get as close to it as possible without touching it. If you're using interval notation, that means right at the 3 you would have a round bracket which signifies get as close to it as possible and then continue on. And in this particular case, as you go down in the table, the values of x actually get larger. So that means that we're looking at when the x's are greater than 3. For interval notation, that's going to be a round bracket starting at 3 and continuing forward into infinity because we'll con assume the table can go on as lo forever if we continued it. If you're in set notation, you don't want to use the notation I put right here. This is interval notation. If you want set notation, you need to actually use this statement right here where x is greater than 3. And then you want to um, utilize your set brackets on the outside and then you use an x and this straight line right here. If you were reading this statement, the set brackets would mean the set of all and then you have an x, so the set of all x and then this straight line right here means the word such that. It's kind of shorthand for it. So this is the set of all x such that x is greater than 3. And that's how you would read that. So if you're asked for set builder notation, use this. If you're asked for interval notation, you use this. But to recap what we did, we basically looked at this table found where your y1 and y2 were equal, which was right here, and then compared the values right before it to see what happened there, and compared the values right after to see what happened there. From there, you just determine where your solution is.